the civility of the left. At 12 years old, my drama teacher was berating me. How have you been this week, Stefan? Well, I have been enjoying watching your interactions with some lovely leftist open-minded people who love reason and evidence on campus. And this is the thing that to me is, I don't, I'm not left-wing, I'm not right-wing, but I do enjoy spending time with people who don't call me Satan for having different uh, perspectives, opinions, facts, reason, evidence, data. This to memos, me is one of the great challenges. <laughs> like it has become like the religious warfare that, that plagued Europe for a couple of hundred years. It's, it's where the difference of opinion is not a difference in interpretation, it's not a difference in source data, it's not a difference in reasoning, good or bad. It is good versus evil. To disagree with me is evil, and that is fundamentally a fragmented holy horror of Christendom when you had the, you know, Anabaptists warring with the Swingalians, warring with the, you know, other Protestants and, and the Calvinists and so on, and everybody was trying to kill each other for 300 years because to disagree was evil. And it's like, it's so weird to me that the largely secular and atheist left is manifesting some of the worst and most deplorable habits of extreme fundamentalist religiosity while all the a time claiming to be rational and secular. First off, I appreciate you attempting to reappropriate the term deplorable. I, I see how you fit that in there. Secondly, if you don't want to be referred to as Satan, unfortunately, you have the gray patch that grows in this way. You're going to have to dye that. Thirdly, no, I think you are absolutely uh, correct. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it, here's something else, too. I'll talk about this later in the program. To disagree is evil, but acts of evil, as we just saw in Florida, blamed on inanimate objects. There is a fundamental incapability of accepting that evil exists and acknowledging it for what it is when it's clear, when we should all agree, hey, listen, someone mass murdering people, that is evil. No, 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 at that point, it's just, it's, it's maybe mental illness. It's about the gun laws. No, no, let's talk about it from evil first, and then let's move on. But when it comes to disagreeing, for example, male privilege is a myth, well, that's evil. And that's what I find so crazy about it. It would be one thing if they just refused to acknowledge the concept of good and evil all around, but they don't. Oh, man, these people use the dead more than uh, voodoo magicians, because what they do is if, if people had done their job, you know, do your damn job and we can have our freedoms. Right. If the FBI had done their job after being repeatedly warned about this guy, I was just reading this morning that one of the families he was staying with told the cops, oh, this guy had guns to people's head. If they had done the jobs, the police had been called 39 times to his house right. because of elder abuse or child abuse, because of like random horrible stuff that was going on. There was ample warning. There was, if, if those laws had been enforced, if, if shooting a gun in the neighborhood, blowing up chickens with his gun, if that law had been enforced, this guy would have been off the streets. Right. So the fact that the police doesn't do their job, that the police don't do their job, the fact that the FBI don't do their job, the fact that 16 child services was called and should have been doing their job, the fact that 16 different bureaucratic layers didn't do their job, well, that means you lose your fundamental rights to own a gun. Come on. If the government can't do its job, they will do a terrible job of restricting gun ownership anyway. So why should one series and layers of government incompetence lead to another stripping of rights? No, just have them do their jobs and we won't have these problems. Oh, sounds to me like Stefan Molyneux doesn't care about children. Doesn't care. That's what it sounds like to me. Sounds like dead. Satan, Mr. Satan. On your hands, Mr. Satan. has blood in his wait, hands. Wait, wait. The mask slips. Yeah. <laughs> slips. That's, the mask slips. Of course, you it's just... all a front. For 51 years, it's been a front. Yes, it's going to exactly. slip. Lay low. Ah! Lay low for 51 years and then just come out of the woodwork. No, it, it, it really it's is. It's a long, bald con, let me tell you that. Yes, right exactly. There. I will appreciate your commitment to character. Daniel Day-Lewis could learn a thing or two. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is remarkable. Of course, I think you answered your own question. They don't want to acknowledge the fundamental incompetence of government. And, of course, they have a penchant for stripping people of actual fundamental human rights like that of self-preservation. Uh, and I will say this. Listen, you know, uh, people talk about disagreeing. I've disagreed with some people on the right in the sense that a lot of them go too far and say, well, oh, we have, oh, it's a mental health issue. No, no. It's a violent past issue. It's a past of violent transgressions because we don't want the uh, the government to be able to say, well, you know what, you, uh, you you took Xanax as a teenager. You can't purchase a firearm. Now, I know plenty of people who have mental health issues. And one thing, too, I don't want people out there to not pursue mental health assistance for fear of losing their rights. That's something that's lost. And I know the right is looking to counter the left, and so they sort of simplify it. Well, hold on a second. Let's look at this person. Like you said, 39 notifications, including violent actions. And by the way, this is all, this should all be on a background check. Just just got my new uh, Walther. 
background yeah. check, asked you any felonies, any violent misdemeanors, or domestic abuse. It's just it just wasn't reported. This is why I like Trump. He just sidesteps all of it, just goes after bump stocks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bump stocks. That's right, because belt loops is too hard to say. No, yes. here's the funny thing, too. I don't like this mental illness stuff, too, because mental illness, let's just say it's a little bit of a fluid term. I mean, how yes. many psychologists and psychiatrists out there who think that Trump is mentally ill? Right. And would love to take away his rights. Uh, how many boys stuck in terrible girl-centric schools with really biased anti-boy female teachers a lot of time, and that bias has been very clearly recorded. It's like, oh, you have mental illness. You must, you must now take amphetamines because you're not fitting into a terrible school that hates you for being male. And it's like, right. I don't know. I don't. It's such a slippery definition. What is mental health? I mean, under the Soviet Union, you were mentally ill if you didn't love communism. Uh, clearly, you or needed you to be, uh, have horse tranquilizers shoved up your nose because you weren't adapting to or an your insane ass. environment. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's way too <laughs> slippery a term. Like, oh, having having trouble taking away people's rights? Well, we'll just slap an arbitrary label called mental illness on right. them, and next thing you know. Well, and the problem is the right concedes that ground because they want to stand uh, constitutionally in the Second Amendment, as they should. They go, yeah, yeah, hold on, mental illness. And I go, no, hold on a second. We want people to be mentally healthy. We want people to get help if they need help, and we don't want them to be afraid to do that for fear of losing their rights. Like you said, I mean, I have family members who lost two parents very quickly, and someone prescribed them antidepressants. Now, that's a bad doctor. You know, it doesn't mean that this person is bipolar, certainly not with comorbidity. Does that prevent them from being able to ever defend themselves? This is something that a lot of people throw out and they try and act as though it's common ground. Like, oh yeah, let's agree, mentally ill people. It, it, it's not okay to say hashtag not all Muslims, but then hashtag all mentally ill people. There's a big mm -hmm. spectrum, as it were. And also, many people who claim to be on the spectrum who really aren't. Maybe that's a silver lining there. People will stop claiming to be on the spectrum. Like, oh, I have Asperger's. Well, now you can't buy a gun. No, 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 wait, I'm just an asshole. I'm just an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I just cold hearted. Well, here's the thing, too. Everyone should understand this, that mental health is going to become the new Nazi. Because you, you know how that game worked over the last couple of years. You you hate Nazis. Yeah, yeah, Nazis are bad. Yeah, I hate Nazis, too. Nazis are the worst. Do you agree with me? Yeah, yeah, Nazis are the worst. Psych, you're a Nazi. <laughs> and, and so that, that is, we don't want that. So it's going to be like, yeah, mentally ill people shouldn't have guns. Oh, okay, I'll maybe I'll take that argument. That's fine, right? Oh, everyone on the right is mentally ill. No guns for like. You right. know how this definition works. They get you to agree with the worst thing around, and then they expand that definition to include everyone except themselves. That is an old con that's been going on since the French Revolution. Yeah, exactly. That's a good point. It's been going. And when people say, "Oh, that doesn't happen," it can happen very, very quickly. Sure. And it's also why. I don't want President Trump or his administration to have the ability to determine that, just as I wouldn't want Barack Obama's administration. 